course. Mm. I'm calling from Los Angeles, and I'm having a little problem under the name That Umbrella Guy. I sent him my phone number at least 20 times in the chat and told him to call me. And told him to call me. Mm -hmm. um, he ignored me. Or I'm a man. I filed the report. If you guys could take a look at it and give me a call back, I would love to, to hear what you guys can do to help us. We really, huh, yeah. we really need to kind of stop this guy at least until Monday. And told him to call me. Or I'm a man. <laughs> What's up? You know what's crazy? The reason the intro is so long is because I got knocked out of the control thing again by YouTube. <laughs> so I was like, screw it. I could still uh, pull up the, the stuff, but they knocked out my audio and everything. It's crazy stuff, man. Wow. Look at all our freaking uh, memberships. Thank you. I, I saw a... A first one come in, I'll hit that one too. But man, 20 across. Sandy Nichols, thanks for the uh, five gifted memberships. By the way, I'm going to show that um, that flag. It's cool. I set it up in the garden. <laughs> Manic Malice, also thank you for the five gifted memberships. Wow, I, I was watching them fall in. <laughs> Fallen Hero, thank you for five gifted memberships as well. And Liz, thank you also for five gifted memberships. Man, I... Thank you. I appreciate you all. What a way to start there. I also had Laura. Laura gifted a membership too. Thank you as well. You know, again, appreciate that. Let me show you something cool, by the way, while we're building for a minute. And then we're going to talk. I'm going to talk a few things. There's some, there's some wild stuff going on. Absolutely wild stuff going on. Let's start on a good note <laughs> before we talk about all the... I don't know. The herd stuff is pretty funny. It's crazy. Stupid. Check that out. Isn't that cool? It's the Tugs Thugs Cactus Crew flag. I put it out in the garden. <laughs> it looks so good. Uh, Sandy sent that, you know. Sent a bunch of stuff. Sent some cacti. I'm replanting them. Um, I've got uh, two of them replanted, but I, I didn't like the size of the the planner the other one was in so i'm replanting it they were cool things all kinds of cool stuff i mean people again if you want to send something to the p.o box man it's cool it's it's really cool to get something on a day that's absolutely crazy it's a reality it's a reality reminder that no matter how stupid things get there's always some fun times to be had. <laughs> so I appreciate that. I pre like I, say, I, I appreciate stuff like that quite a bit. Ah, let's check out this herd stuff real fast. Then we'll uh, so I thought this was interesting because this actually 
this is something I talked yesterday about how with Russell Brand, you've had pretty much everyone in the herd crew shift to Russell Brand. It's it's like a it's like the 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 major distraction, as it were, you know, because for herd, she kept coming up L's. You know, she had she had the movie problem, she had the Elon problem. I mean, it just it kept happening over and over again. This was one of those too. This was one of the major things. By the way, this is uh, this is an interesting subject. You know how they always complain about like YouTube videos, like oh my god, they like to say you're quote unquote monetizing victims. Well, I noticed that Eve Barlow is pushing a Substack that she is, um, you know, she's she's monetizing it, and it's about Russell Brand. So I was like, aren't you, aren't you uh, monetizing victims? I mean, by her own listen and belief standards, isn't that what that is? Excuse me, if you hear that again, if, if you're in there, I like a, I, I'll smoke a cigar while I'm live streaming. I try not to do it any other time, but during live streams, it's calming. Plus, you know, this is my, I switch from work to this mode. So it's like, all right, it's a little leisure. <laughs> uh, What's up, AJ Stone? Ten gifted memberships, by the way. Wow! So that's that's thirty-one gifted memberships. <laughs> that is nuts. That's crazy, man. Oh, that's probably the fastest I think we've had gifted memberships come in. <laughs> you know, for that level, we've had some crazy numbers sometimes, but usually, like, they take a hot minute. You know, and that these were like, oof, they look crazy, like right across the top. It looks cool. Thank you. This, though, this is big, and I don't think people understood how big it is because this isn't just an attack on Jason Momoa, James Wan, Aquaman 2. This, this proves what I've been saying about a blacklist. There is no way in hell you will get a job after doing this stuff. They, they will not hire you because she's not a, you know, if, if you were, if you were troubling or troubled, you know, you caused problems, but you made money, they will deal with your behavior. She is not marketable, especially after the trial stuff. So she decided she was going to play the victim with Again, the, the same people. So in 2022, while well, the trial was going on, she, she and her team were telling the world that these were the people that that salvaged her. They brought her back. You know, they were her heroes, right? One year later, we're finding out that that's not the case. In fact, in therapy notes that we had no access to before. These are these are those notes that we kept hearing about how uh, she had medical um, she had medical proof. Yeah, her quote unquote medical proof is really just a bunch of shit talking about everybody. I mean, it's everybody but her. Everybody else in the world's problems. And this is kind of amazing because of what it says. I'm going to read this. It's not just this one. There's some more. But this, again, I, I want to show you the article, too. Because these articles, again, the Russell Brand thing became a uh, a distract, a great distraction for her. Because the headline, I mean, sh she was getting hammered, you know. And I'm just talking about her usual kind of hammered, you know. Usually, she's like five glasses to the wind hammered. This, this is... <laughs> this is the kind of a uh, man you feel this one when you're sober in a different way you know you don't feel it you don't feel it in the migraine coming on and wear wear some dark sunglasses you feel it in the every opportunity disappears every single one so listen to this head i mean just listen to this article and again remember i, I love that i was told forever there's no blacklisting that umbrella guy's dying. Okay, you tell me. Does this sound like a job? You have a job left. <laughs> you can, you know, when I I want to make this clear. You can work for some little ragtag shithole out there and make sixty five thousand dollars. I mean, you can you can get a uh, sci fi channel level quality shit. You know, you can do that all the time. But you're not going to get real work. You know, I'm talking about the work at the level that she wanted and. 
arguably she wouldn't have had that ever again anyway. Even without the uh, the Depp trial, she she burned her bridges. You can tell she burns them with everybody. Like that's the amazing thing. And again, like I said, the Russell Brand. Ah, there's new stuff with that too. Yeah, crazy stuff. Well, I talk about today, but that again, it took the eyes off, but it doesn't change the reality. So listen to these articles, and a lot of them were like this. Amber Heard details Jason Momoa, James Wan's toxic behavior. She's accusing yet more people of something terrible. On Aquaman 2, Heard claimed Jason Momoa wanted to get her fired from Aquaman 2 after the de defamation trial. He wanted to get her fired. Uh, so Heard was allegedly subjected to harassment and unfair treatment of the sets of Aquaman 2 by James Wan, Jason Momoa, and recently surfaced therapy notes from... Don Hughes, if you don't remember Don Hughes, by the way, boy, she's that sour face monster that hates, she hates men. She hates men. But, you know, one of the things that you have to remember about a therapist anyway, therapists are, therapists are not fact checkers, you know. I, I'm telling you this as a, as a mental health professional. I, I don't do one-on-ones and stuff like that anymore, but... Having um, having spent a lot of time in mental health, I still work in mental health, but um, ah, that one-on-ones, man, they eat you up after a while. Little kids, I work with a lot of little kids. But anyway, the, um, the, the job of a therapist is to be your active, is to be your support, is to listen and believe you. That, that's quite literally. Now, you can question if you find problems there in the report, you know, after a while, you can question why that's there and stuff. But it, your job isn't really to to question, oh, man, I got bullied or whatever. You know, you look at, OK, well, what's the problem there? Is it an interpersonal problem? Is it uh, is it problems with anxiety, depression, you know, whatever the client reports? And then you go in, you work with the client. So the client can, you know, figure their way forward. So the reason I mention that is because they are not fact checkers, you know, just, just, re just straight up. So anything claimed is you might as well figure a bunch of garbage, especially with herd, man. I mean, if you look at somebody and you're like, yeah, those people, they tell the truth all the time. Okay. But again, every single person is apparently turned on her. So. She says that Momoa and Juan wanted her fired from the uh, film. Momoa and Juan. You notice that? That both of them now get in the crosshairs. It's Momoa. Um, there was a, a, an interesting rumor that came up in the past. And there are pictures that kind of back this up. So I, I wonder. I, I, now, this is just, again, there, there's nothing that proves this or anything. It's just maybe. I wonder. So James Wan, he was... Uh, he was friends with Elon Musk, it looks like. You know, they they seem to get along decently well when uh, when all of them were introduced together. If you look at pictures of all of them together, I mean, it it, it doesn't look like he's like, oh, yeah, I want to hang out with her. It looks like, hey, what's up, Elon? And, you know, and it makes you wonder if keeping her on for movies and stuff is yeah they kept her on because we're going to show solidarity but also more of you know well at elon you know he was having he lists in his book that he had problems for over a year after their breakup you have to wonder if he's like yeah can you do me a solid and on the other side of that you have to wonder you know is there some veracity or validity to the fact that everyone does hate her on the set. I mean, again, something went majorly wrong with uh, Momoa publicly unfollowing her on Instagram. I mean, you know, people look at that and they think, well, why does that, why does that matter? Because like Momoa, one of the things that he doesn't really do every now and then he'll make a stupid political statement, right? In this day and age, that's pretty much expected. You know, that, that can hurt a product, but 
he doesn't go out and intentionally harm products, call out other actors. You know, he's um, he's pretty much the a professional in that right. He he gives you a a timeline full of fun where you're like, yeah, I want to go see that stuff. He seems like an all right dude. For him to unfollow Amber Heard before Aquaman two comes out, just with a few months left, that's a statement in and of itself. And he wasn't the only one. You know, you had Gal Gadot. You had some of the Warners that had followed her. They unfollowed again. Something happened. <laughs> you could see it. It was, hmm. But anyway, so when apparently when that wouldn't happen, she says he would torment her by coming to the set dressed up like Johnny Depp. <laughs> Complete with rings. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, he'd get drunk. And when he come to set, he, he would dress like Johnny Depp. Let me get, let me blow this up. Give me a second here. These are some scraggly ass notes, by the way. I was like, man, <laughs> you know, her writing is rough sometimes. Here, give me a second. Here we go. All right. So her is saying she starts out. I do my work. Keep my head down. Really really hard have to face studio executives and marketing reps now i very much believe that now she's going to complain about the fact that there's a lockdown she couldn't post about movies no one could take selfies with her and stuff and i, I believe that she is like a real life version of movie kryptonite you know <laughs> nobody wanted anything to do with her so i very much do believe that you're going to have that contact. But you know, what's interesting is they still kept her on. Like if all of this stuff is happening, the movie, the movie studio knows that there's a problem. They know. I think what they were afraid of, honestly, is her winning in the courtroom especially after what they did with Depp, you know, in, in the Me Too era, that shows you how strong an accuser is because no matter how shitty or horrible they are, they become unfireable. And I think that's what they knew. They were like, oh, you're bad for our product, but how do we get rid of you? You know? If they just had the, I'm telling you, if they just had the stones to stand up and do something... They could have had a different freaking outcome. Now, even the director, it continues, of Aquaman 2 couldn't post. And he raised his voice at me. I can't even post about Aquaman. <laughs> that's what that's supposed to be James Wan. He's like, he's pissed off because he can't post about his own movie. And I'm sure that's a problem, by the way. You know, I'm sure people are like, we're in this movie, but it's a void. And, you know, it, it would be a problem. It's not that you couldn't post as in there was some dictate. It was you couldn't post without hearing about how messed up she is. So she's saying that James Wan yelled at her. And again, these are just quant you take it as you will. I like to pr I like to imagine these are real. <laughs> but, you know, in James Wan, I, I feel like um, both of them ended up in the crosshairs. You know what's messed up about this, too? So James Wan was just recently hospitalized because of all the stress that he has been under lately. And it has to be aligned with Aquaman, too. So you're going to remember all those small movies that he did that he made a fortune on. All of those horror movies. If he, if he had one that missed, you'd be talking six million in the hole. No big deal, right? I mean, like, not not in the scope of things. Yeah, it's six million bucks. But, I mean, he's made hundreds of millions for the same companies puts out. So, if they had a flop, he could still rebrand and do something. With Aquaman, it has been endless. You know, you got to remember, they spent all that time putting the movie together. First of all, they, they fire Amber Heard, pull her out of her contract. Then, they bring her back. While this is going on, she's weaponizing, she weaponizes the company 
she weaponizes the brand. She's already before weaponized Aquaman and Warner Brothers and all the people around her. But in, in the process, she weaponizes all of the people around her, too. And they actually draw rank and show solidarity. You also have people like Peter Saffron, you know, the producer now in charge. He's come out. He's made statements at the time. With Aquaman, it sounds like it was turbulent, a mess. And you end up with uh, if if what Heard says is true, and you never know. James Wan says he denies this. I mean, and she is a liar, a habitual liar, so you never know. But James Wan says, you know, she was never supposed to be this major role. Heard says, yeah, they rewrote the whole thing. And the script that they utilized, it, it hasn't gone over well. So maybe there's something to that. You know, a rushed script really will make oftentimes either an incomplete or a boring story. That's what you end up with. So you have major rounds of reshoots. You have more and more. I'm, again, I'm hearing they talk about $205 million budget. I'm hearing $400 million or more. You know, we know they severely underreport anyway, but the three rounds of reshoot. So you got to think about the stress and pressure. So James Wan ends up in the hospital for this stuff. I mean, it's and what does he come out to? This, this, and continual pressure off of Aquaman, having to deal with her crazy uh, weirdos that they pretty much galvanize with. You know, with PR, they pushed him. They try to get them going, and yeah. I mean, it never stops. So, I mean, that's pretty nasty, you know. But then again, it, it's it's kind of par for the course. So she says, you know, I can't even post about Aquaman, he said. Made it seem like it was my fault. And I said, sorry. You know, again, that sounds like a story she would. And then a giant fish came out and it, and it swallowed Jason Momoa. <laughs> it's like, what? Giant fish tails. Uh, crazy. A mashed potato goblin. Thank you for the 10 gifted memberships, by the way. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, too. Like I said, that's 40. Wait, is that? What is that? Is that right? 41? No. Oh, I missed AJ Stone, too. Sorry, AJ Stone. Thank you, AJ Stone, for the 10 gifted memberships as well. Sorry, man. My, uh, my, my mind just... Oh, I was laughing at this, and I totally spaced it. That would be, I think, 51. Well, that is an... <laughs> That is a, an impressive number there. Thank you all. Actually, this month has been a, an interesting. It's funny because all these people are like, you know, I had I had health problems. There's been a lot of craziness going on. So I I slowed down in production significantly. And this month has had more production and the the metrics and stuff, you know, they've been through the roof. So and that's because of all you folks. So. I very much do appreciate that. You know, and it shows all the the crazies and the lamos. I mean, again, there's a thousand people right here right now. So it's like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, here's a fun fact, by the way. So while we're looking at this, Amber Heard's uh, newest movie has made, it's reportedly made now around 792 euros. That's in its theatrical run in uh, in Italy. <sighs> there's a movie called Rubber. I don't know if you've ever heard of the movie called Rubber. It's uh, about a sentient tire. Like, you know, a tire rolling down the road. It's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a smart tire. <laughs> it made $100,000 in the box office in its run. So a smart tire <laughs> has out earned Amber Heard by, well, a over, over a hundred to one. <laughs> a smart tire. It's so funny. I love it. What's up, Melody? Thanks for the four months. Tug, I've emailed you copies of letters UK Gov is sending out urging demonetization. Yeah, I I, I, I saw the story on that. I want to, that's good. I want to see the letter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. I thought it would uh, be worth putting in a video too. Liz, thank you also for the 10 gifted memberships. 61 now. That's nuts. I can't remember what the, the record was. I think it's 73. So, I mean, that's crazy. That is so close. And sin. thank you for the nine months. Yay. Yay, indeed. <laughs> thank you. Ah, oh, crazy stuff, though. And Ray, what's up, Ray? Thanks for the three. Sorry, Tug. Like, yay. How's everyone doing? Everyone is great. I hope all of you are doing great. So, let's continue here. She says, this is all I will work on. Until the case is a distant memory. 
You know, like she pretends that she has options, by the way. This is the only option that I'm going to choose. Why? Well, nobody will hire you. She did so much damage. You got to remember, like a lot of people didn't keep up with the the particulars of the case early on, but she wanted information from Disney. Just to show you, you, you piss off a couple of these monolithic companies, you know, these Goliaths. and you're done. You know, I mean, you're done. Whether that's fair or not, that that that's the reality. So you see all the mess with Warner. Warner told her not to mention the project and everything else. That was part of their stipulation. And from what I understand, they were really pissed off about what happened. You know, there was a lot of anger about the fact that they were being brought up so much. Not as bad with certain people like, uh, again, people like Peter Saffron who made statements. But you notice no other person in the, the executive <laughs> branch, they wouldn't say anything. You know, you have all those execs. They're like, yeah, they kept that mouth shut. But um, she went after Disney. So she requested, uh, she requested anything that they had because she was trying to say, I didn't cost pirates. He cost himself pirates. And what they wanted was they wanted to find nothing. So Disney went in. They did a limited search, which was okay by her initial lawyers. And then new lawyers came in because she kept firing her lawyers over and over. Anytime they wouldn't do something, you know, she'd be like, get this move to, a, to another state. And if they couldn't, bam, you're fired. I mean, she'd fire them over nothing. That's why after a while she ended up with a subpar group because uh, – Elaine especially would do any damn thing she wanted, except win, because Elaine is a suck ass lawyer. She's terrible. Like we all saw that play out. But when they went back to Disney, they demanded they do a full comprehensive search, and Disney was like, "Oh, we can't do that." And then they, she, her, and her lawyers were like, "Okay, well, we want you to sign something that says that you did that." And they were like, "We're not going to sign that because we didn't do that." That's not what you wanted. So she threatened to uh, she threatened to essentially sue them for the information that she wanted. And the stuff that Disney had to say about that was scathing. They were like, you know, we're we are not taking part in your bait and switch. You know, I mean, it's just they called her out, and you're like, man, they are right there. That your career's probably done for that. But then. You find out all the stuff that happened with Warner Brothers. What studio would want to touch her? She doesn't earn money anyhow. Anyone that would take a gamble, they would have to deal with all of the backlash, all of the insanity. And for what? A D-list aging actress, you know? One that has real, real problems. So, role cut down significantly, she said changed content you know again we heard about how she said that um, there was an entire act of aquaman that was supposed to be dedicated to her from the early from from all of the early scripts there's supposed to be a giant action scene and stuff you know i believe that that stuff is true honestly because you think about it why would you severely downgrade the role of Amber Heard, and yet have the baby and everything else in there? Like, why would you do that? Like, that, that doesn't make sense to me. You know, it, it looks like at one time they plotted, and, and you know, it's crazy. So when the trailer came out and you have the the baby front and center, you know, these crazy people have been going after the baby? <laughs> Yeah, they've been uh, they've been going after the baby. They've been going after Momoa because God uh, God forbid that a dad actually you know show interest and you know and and we actually show the reality that maybe uh, there's I don't know an absentee mom in Mira. I mean, I mean God forbid, right? That that could be that could be the reality to it. What's up, Liz, by the way? Thank you for the 14 months. Tugger nods. <laughs> no, no statement there, but plenty of statement there. Thank you. 
what's funny here is she's going to throw Zack Schneider, and this is his own problem too. She says, then Jason, of course, Momoa said he wanted to be fired as well. So she's saying that, like, that's hard to believe. Jason Momoa, everything we've ever heard about Jason Momoa is that he's a, a giant prankster. You know, like he's a goof. And for him to come out and confront her and say that, like, I, I find that very hard to believe. I want to believe it, <laughs> but I don't think, you know, I don't think that's real. I think this is just another example of her, the relationship quality, and also the woe is me type. You know, everyone's against me. Everyone except Zack Schneider. You see that? Zack Schneider and his wife producer stood by me. <laughs> That's throwing Zack Schneider in there as well. You know, and remember, we as part of the as part of the evidence that they noted at first, they didn't utilize in the courtroom, but they were noticing or they were noting as um as items that they planned on presenting. There were email communications between these folks. Like, that would be very frustrating to find out that Amber Heard had decided she was going to utilize, like, if you, you know, she wrote you and she was like, oh, my God, like, all these people are terrible. And you'd be like, oh, no, you know, well, we're here with you. You know, we know how crazy this stuff is. You know, she was going to use that stuff as if they witnessed something. We're really, you know, just basic support gets you thrown under the bus. That. Nobody would want that at all, I'm sure. What's up, Subi Sue? Thank you for the 14 months. Hey, AH uh, did all this by herself. That's indeed true. Thank you for all you do. Much love to you and the fam. Thank you. Yep, I agree with that. Then she says, but on set, look, Jason, he was drunk late on. You know, he was drunk. She's trying to say, oh, oh he was drunk. He'd be on the set late. And that's Pretty um pretty interesting considering who the source of this is. I mean, Amber Heard is not only a terrible source, but she very much seems to have a full blown drinking problem. Remember that uh, last. Remember we heard first of all in the trial we heard that her baseline was. One to two bottles of $500 wine a day. That was during relationship time. So that would be, you know, that would be before all this. We Every time you saw pictures of her in the paparazzi, she'd be carrying boxes of wine and other, you know, I'd be like, man, look at that box wine. <laughs> Going to dine on the box wine, baby. <laughs> but we also saw uh, pictures recently at that film festival you know, the one that, that she was at where she was like, man, look at all these people that turned out for me. When really you hear them uh, chanting about Indiana Jones again, you know, they're not there for you. If you you can't even pull a thousand dollars like in your in your your film opening. Yeah. The people really turned out for you. What a crock, you know, I mean, what a bunch of garbage. You open your film to one hundred and eighty four euros. No. <laughs> and your your entire run there. You're not making a thousand bucks. I mean, that's that's crazy. She got paid too. This I, I like throwing this in because this this piece of information I think really tells you about her career path right now. Yeah, she had that movie and she had all these people doing PR for her, but the Actual money she got paid. It was reported that she got paid around $65,000. She was doing movies with like Aquaman for millions. And her last project besides that was in the fire, $65,000. Now, of course, people will take on a passion project or something. But man, even then, even for indies, people usually command a decent bit of money. You know, you know if they're going to be the, the mainstay person in that. And somebody that, again, was getting $30,000 a speech. I mean, that's what she was getting at the height of all of this insanity. $30,000 plus per speech. 
she's been relegated to a $65,000 role, you know. I mean, not scoffing on 65 grand. I like, I like that money, but you know, for somebody that, that has the lifestyle habit, she does. Uh, uh, Rhea Raya, what's up? Thanks for the two. AH loves the sauce. Indeed. <laughs> she's like, she's like ordering from, uh, from Domino's. She's like, Oh, look at the top extra sauce. <laughs> it's like, give me more. Give me more. Uh, She's like, this isn't what I ordered. It comes with extra pizza sauce. She's like, no, no. <laughs> she thought it was going to come with a hot tub full of alcohol. <laughs> uh, extra sauce indeed. What's up, mashed potato goblin? Thanks for those 13 months, too. Amber's passion project told the world I'm a fraud indeed. That It almost felt like that, that movie's got to be funny. I'm telling you, I'm going to, I'm going to find that on the seas and I'm going to freaking watch it. <laughs> I'll tell you all if it's funny or not, you know, cause there's got, there's going to be some funny stuff in there. Bad acting. Oh my God. It's going to be funny for all the wrong reasons. John thinks five, by the way, Tug, after you talked about it last night, I did some searching. Apparently in Italy, average ticket is seven euros. <laughs> okay. So that would have been her opening night. For a hundred, okay. For, so that that's interesting. So, if a ticket, yeah, seven euros, that would be twenty six people. So twenty six people turned out for her. She, she got all that media, everything else, and in Italy, she got twenty six people to turn out for the debut. That's awful. That is awful. What's up, Tim? Thanks for the 10. Fire JD on allegations that turned out to be false, but keep AH after the court deemed her to be toxic BS artist. Where's the call to boycott WB already? Oh, man. Like Twitter. I mean, what you'll see every time this stuff trends, it's trending and boycotting. What's funny about this, so this is, this is the greatest thing ever. Her supporters are calling for the boycott now because the trailer it had less than a second of her in it so they've been calling for boycott isn't that amazing so they're boycotting the very vehicle that we were told just a month ago was her hollywood comeback <laughs> you gotta love life some days i mean that's uh oh that's rich isn't it ironic? Don't you think? <laughs> uh, I'm going to bust some Alanis more set in a minute. It's like, wait. No, I'm not, actually. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Christy, thanks for the To paraphrase, they comment for Fred Astaire. So it applies to AH. Can't act. Can't sing. Can rant a little. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. That's funny. So here, it gets even better. Look. So he's supposedly drunk, drinking on set, right? Jason Momoa. Then she says, on set, he's dressing like Johnny. <laughs> Had all the rings, too. That, I, I mean, again, I see him as a practical joker and stuff, but I mean, does that, do you really think he would? <sighs> what he probably came, he probably came to set with, you know, looking bohemian. You know, I guess is a good way. You know, that bohemian chic kind of look. He uh, he probably had on a few rings. Because Jason Momoa wears rings, too. You know? And she was like, oh, my God, it's Johnny. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she thought it was about her. She made it all about her. What she's saying there is pretty nasty. I mean, when you think about it, all jokes aside. Because what she's saying is, and you think about how this you got to think about when it came from. So behind, she's saying that in the in the height of all of these accusations, that Jason Momoa is dressing as the person that she said was was accosting her, and not only that, but wearing the very tools that he was supposedly uh, she was supposedly accosted with. Like that's a jacked up thing to throw at him. This tells you, like how horrible that working with her has to be because she's saying they're doing that and me i did my job professionally i was a professional <laughs> it's like 
<laughs> she's like, she's like, well, I am a mermaid. I really got into the role, you know, because I drown my liver. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not what mermaids do. <laughs> She's like, I live this underwater. It's like, alcohol is not water. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm, I'm the consummate professional, really. Subi Sue, thanks for the vibe. I do hear AH say I'm a fraud somewhere in the film. Yes, yeah, see, that's what I mean. I, I think that'll be funny because she does. She, uh, that big trailer that they had of the movie. That, that's when she comes out and says, she, she admits, she's like, I'm a fraud. <laughs> you know, and it's just, it's kind of funny. I wonder how long it'll take before she throws some of those people under the bus too. She probably already has behind the scenes. So then, you know, she says, nobody could take selfies. That looks like a, I think that's supposed to be an of me or with me, or I don't know, man. These This uh, chicken scratch is so hard to read. Uh, I say that as somebody who takes, like, shorthand notes. At least, like, you could you could probably decipher mine. Like, this is some horrible note-taking. But, yep, nobody could on set. Given blackout, don't post anything on social media. Now, she's saying here, you know, it was for me, it's for me and everyone else could post from set. So that I wonder if it ties back to the beginning, you know, marketing reps and studio execs. Like I said, I, I believe that. I actually do believe that there was a, a marketing lockout there because they, uh, there's an entire site full of stuff like this. So, a bunch of stuff ended up hitting that we had never seen before. There was this. Okay, so I did a video. I may drop it tomorrow. I'm not sure. It depends on what comes up. I made it, um, and I I don't know if you you folks remember. Do, do you, you? I'm sure you remember the event. You remember when Camille Vasquez dominates Elaine when Elaine was trying to. Uh, to talk to to herd for re, for redirect and i mean she just basically gets shut down ever over and over herd ends up stomping off you know there were all the talks about her bawling out a, a lane behind things well what they were trying to do was enter ear nose and throat quote unquote evidence right we were hearing that the uh, the ear nose and throat doctors they had somehow suggested well she needed surgery and that surgery was from which is absurd well the pictures that she introduced they weren't pictures of your head they were they were pictures from a medical book they had some squiggly lines on them but we were like, these aren't doctor's notes or anything. They're actual. It's an actual page from a textbook, including the little, including the little footnotes at the bottom that come from a, you know, like when you have like a di I shouldn't say footnotes. It's a diagram notes. You know how you have like a one and it tells you what that is. <laughs> well, it's the same thing. They're all in there. I put together a video on it, but it's it's crazy because that was what they were going to introduce. And an ear, nose, and throat specialist. See, I, I've had that procedure done before. I had a problem with um, with a deviated septum. Um, and here's the thing. You can you can get that from a number of ways. Yes, you could get it from an injury. You can also get it from everything from being born with it, bad plastic surgery, drugs, terrible sinuses, picking your nose too much. I mean, there's plenty of reasons you could in, end up damaging. I, I would say bad plastic surgery would be just as bad, but or drugs. I mean, you put enough of that. <laughs> You put a, enough of that Colombian sugar up your nose. I mean, you know, <laughs> good Lord. When you try to reenact a Johnny Depp movie, I mean, maybe it's fun to reenact Blow, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, you might need to see an ENT after that. 
That doesn't mean that Johnny Depp fucked your nose up. I'm just saying, if you go out and you reenact Depp, that does or reenact Blow, that does not mean that Johnny Depp beat you up. That means you probably did again. Uh, a little bit of that Colombian fun time. <laughs> uh, well, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll be like Johnny Depp. He got me. Be like, what did he do to you? He's like, he made me reenact the movie Blow. <laughs> he he caused he caused damage, and I had to see an ENT. Uh, Rhea Ra, what's up? Thanks for the five. They had other issues. <laughs> they had other uses for throat that didn't include injury. That was one of my favorite parts of that that whole that whole drama too. Let me pull up something real quick while we're talking, okay? One of my favorite parts of that whole thing was listening to um, Rottenborn tell me that that was proof of you know assault. <laughs> I want to pull up this Russell Brand stuff because it's this is nuts too. All right, so. I did a video today, first of all, talking about how he, everything is turning against the man. Like all of the, all of the things that you, he, pro, that profited from him, they have turned on him. Now, you know, I don't care what you think about his guilt or lack thereof. You, that's not justice. Like you've got to think, if accusations alone, they can they can destroy a person like that. What chance do any of us have? Any of us? Like, do you think that um, do you think that if you were accused of something or somebody that you care about, do you, you think that you would be able to survive that? Because I would say absolutely not. You have platforms demonetizing. One second here. You have platforms to monetize, and you have again just the the most insane turn on, and it's it's a uh, it's happened in the last just days. Even platforms. So now we're finding out that you have the UK government writing networks like TikTok to find out that if he is monetizing. His statement where he says, I'm innocent. So the move by YouTube may well not have been a response to the media. It may have been a response to the government of in the UK itself making demands of YouTube. That, <laughs> I mean, you think about how jacked up that is. When you have, when you have a house, of, I mean, again, you see House of Commons, you see the uh, the letter itself. This is the one that's going around here, you know, that's popped up. September 19th, so that was yesterday. Dear Tim, I'm writing concerning the serious allegations regarding Russell Brand, which raise significant questions, not only about uh, the culture of the industry. By the way, this is to BBC, okay? So you can say, Tim... It's Tim Davey, the director general of BBC. So which raised significant questions, not only about the culture of the industry in the past, but whether that culture still prevails today. I mean, look at these these letters here. I mean, you've got the government going out. And, and now, like, like I said, they've written TikTok. But they're writing places like the BBC. They're, they're doing all this craziness. <laughs> you know, they're... They're interceding, and this has not only happened. So another article that I found, too, just to note while, while I'm going into this, they noted that his charitable organizations, so these organizations that work with addiction, they are falling under the watchdog groups as well. They're basically looking and seeing uh, if there's anything they can do so they can uh, they can basically either – take over or shut them down like that that's the move you not only had you know that that's a, a nasty nasty thing that's some nasty business too what he'll have to do is he'll ultimately have to disconnect he'll either have to let those charities go the way of a dinosaur or um he'll have to disconnect from them 
and what makes those charities work is him and what he faced as adversity as an addict. You know, that's a powerful story. Well, that powerful story again. It's just it's messed up. Jay, what what's up? Thank you for the thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership. Welcome to Tugs Thugs, by the way. Thank you. Appreciate that. So listen here. The the culture, media, and sport committee has taken a keen interest in scrutinizing the behavior of the media, in particular PBS, public service broadcasters regarding their duty of care towards staff and contributors. Again, based on allegations. You know, it's, it's fascinating. They give a shit about this until it made headlines. Then they're like, you know, the first time I saw them sound off was uh, with the Dan Wooden stuff. And, and like I said, what's especially troubling about that is they tell me this is an open secret, right? This stuff has been going on for years, but you you, you didn't care about that? You never thought to investigate that? I mean, if things are just an open secret, they're just lying out there. Everybody knows it. I mean, hell, he talked about debauchery and drugs all the time. You didn't think, hey, maybe, maybe we should investigate that then? Only now when it gets major headlines? What an effective watchdog group you are, right? Again, this is this is government deciding they've taken not they, they've taken a keen interest in just again, allegations alone. They're like, we're going to we're going to trigger that. And, you know, the problem here is. Even if they find nothing, the distancing effect, this this makes it much worse. And what's happening right now, if you look at articles, there's an isolating effect. It's not just with brands, brands, as you were, you know, his uh, his agencies, his. Um, his supporter. um his supporter companies, companies that, again, they have like a symbiotic relationship with books and more. No, it's about anyone. His wife's sister, she supposedly supported him, made it, headlines off of that. The point in that is it's an isolating effect. And this happens. This is the playbook by it. You, you can pretty much determine what's going to happen. Um. The first thing typically is an agency drops you. Then, of course, you have all of the other drop off afterwards. You know, you have the this, the sharks, they start swimming. But the government wrinkle is, a, is an even crazier chapter. I mean, the gov government, again, interceding. And I, I mean, what do you think happens with this? Like I said, they didn't care before, but they're playing the role of concerned watchdog. John, thanks for the five. UK government wants to know if um, RB is monetized, but we don't know if Prince eh, was on a certain island. Exactly. Yeah, they they have all this. That that is that is um, a very valid question. I mean, we can we can put this guy under a microscope, but we can't have the client list of a certain island hopper. I mean, are you are you kidding me? A convicted island hopper, let's just say. We can't we can't have that. When all these mofos, at least, even if they didn't have uh access, which they do, it's the very these are the very governments that uh that have the power to reach into uh to to all these uh individual companies. Some of them are state companies as well, but to, to reach in and make demands of them, they have the power. They know, I mean, you know, again, the very agencies that put people on trial and stuff, or the very institutions, rather, I shouldn't say agencies, but institutions, government, you know, your government, uh, they won't tell you about the convicted ones. That says something, you know, that says I don't trust them at all. You know, agenda, agenda is far reaching. Annie, thanks for the aid. Can serial public nuisances like AH? I'm going to be locked up, allegedly. Cheers. Um, right now, okay, so here, here's that Amber Heard thing. Right now, I, I, I found this really interesting. Somebody floated this. and So Australia, you know, they gave up. That was probably the best case scenario for any kind of a potential trial or trial 
uh, without her there. Her move to Spain. In Spain, you can establish, so there, there's a point to say this. Okay, she moves to Spain. She establishes residency by buying a home and, quote unquote, fixing it up. You know, it's, it's basically you can buy in and become a, a citizen that way. All right. One of the protections there is they do not recognize perjury. <laughs> so you can't extradite a person for perjury there. So her in Spain, no. Now in the U.S., could you could you lock up for perjury? It won't happen. Could? Yeah. Would? No. It's not going to happen. That's that's the nasty and the poison. You can see, and again, it's that that pretty privilege. If you want to see that, Russell Brand, you know, he doesn't have that Hollywood elitist backing. I mean, if he were being accused of this stuff right now and he was still like ingrained in Hollywood, he might well, first of all, assuming that ever happened, because they didn't do it before. Again, at the height of when all this stuff. I mean, you have the son awarding him. Applauding three years in a row saying, man, shagger of the year. They were giving him awards for the behavior that they're now condemning. So that just shows you that. But anyway, so they're scrutinizing the behavior if it it is not enough for any organization to have appropriate safeguarding and whistleblowing procedures in place, we need to know at, that these are adhered to. Staff must be assured of the safety of their work environment and have confidence that their employees will address any concern they raise. Why not just bring this up randomly? Why 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 isn't this something that you make sure of without? an event prompting it. Why is this, uh, why is this some retroactive protection? Oh, well, we want to, we want to ensure that going forward, well, why the fuck weren't you doing that before? Like that, that's what, I mean, that's what they're there for. That's what the safeguards are there for too. And, you know, I don't know about the UK, but in the U S you can actually audit for this kind of stuff. Um, and anybody can make complaints as far as a whistleblower is concerned. They can make complaints. Now, you may have um, you may have some kind of internalized uh, regulation on how that's supposed to happen internally first. But if they don't feel that that happens, you can go outside of the agency and there's no retaliation that is supposedly allowed. I'm not saying that retaliation won't happen, but supposedly it won't happen. But there, let's see, as um, you told us when you last appeared before the committee on the 13th of June, the corporation has needed to learn from past mistakes and any complacency is misguided. I welcome the internal investigations that the BBC is undertaking, but I would be grateful if you would set out the time scale by which you anticipate these investigations will be complete. And ask that you keep the committee updated on progress. It would also be helpful if you could uh, provide details on how people with information relevant to investigations can contribute should they wish to provide any new information and raise concerns. Please, could you also assure us that while respecting any potential police investigations, all information that can be disclosed publicly will be so. Finally, we encourage you to encourage people to report incidents to the police. So right here, you've seen this over and over again. This, if you want to know how false accusations are born, this, this is how it happens right here. This is how you get that quantity pile on. Because all we've heard is, talk to the police, talk to the police, talk to the police now. It doesn't, there's no time frame. There's no nothing. There's also no call for evidence. There'll be nothing. It's just mass reports. This is how you end up tried in the media. And the media ends up fucking your entire life up. This is life ruination right here. Is Russell Brand guilty? I don't fucking know. But I know that this will ensure his guilt. And that is wrong. It disgusts me 
to see this kind of move because this is not justice. This is as far from fucking justice as you can ever get. People should be people should be horrified by this because ultimately, you know, people like to play the what well, well, what what if one of the people saying this? What if it was someone you knew? I always love the what. Okay, well, what about him? What if this was fucking you? Because you know what, Russell Brand has enough money that at least he could afford to fight in the aftermath. Could you? Could you afford the the money to keep your ass out of prison? Especially if, again, you, you want to believe these these places, by the way. What really disturbs me about people who believe the mainstream media in 2000, I believe it was 14. The Rolling Stone wrote an article entitled, I'm going to call it an, an ARP <laughs> on campus, okay? In that, there you had 9,000 words, I believe it was, and... It was wrong. It was false. They falsely accused. Got busted doing it. And had to pay millions in restitution. This is the same media. What they've learned from it is to say allegedly and supposedly. Because the, the damning thing for them really wasn't just pointing the finger. When you look at other journalists that, that, that moaned and condoned what they complained about here wasn't the false allegation. It was the fact that they didn't do the basic thing you're supposed to do, put allegedly and supposedly. Like that somehow safeguards you as the person that's accused. Allegedly does not stop people from saying you did it. That just protects them from being sued. Meanwhile, we have how many of these mofos at executive levels that end up, um, I'm going to call them child, um, I'm going to call them playground enthusiasts, you know, because they probably sat around with freaking uh, speed shuttering on freaking um, on school grounds. Yeah, how many of them have been caught doing stuff like that? You believe these people? I mean, you're daft, you know? You just believe random fucking words? I mean, you saw them misrepresent stuff in the documentary itself. That's why I point this out, because what that does, and if you have a problem with that and you say, oh, man, man, you're, you're not being fair with that, that's not me. I didn't make that documentary. I watched it and I was critical. I'm not allowed to be fucking critical. I mean, we're talking about people's lives here. Destroyed by words. I can point at any person out there and I can say 20 years ago, you did this to me. How do you prove that I didn't? I didn't even know you then. Prove it. Prove we didn't have some random freaking moment there. I mean, Russell Brand saying, you know, I hooked up with 893 people in a certain area. I mean, could you remember? And, and you know, the, the poison with accusations is they're like, you need to respond to these allegations. How do you respond to it? It's not just the time frame. It's they're anonymous. How the fuck are you supposed to respond to them, especially if they're not real? I mean, OK, like, like I said, I'm not saying that they aren't, but if they are, how the fuck do you defend yourself here? It's wrong. It frustrates me because we all see this. This is an injustice and it's an injustice that is carried to the highest levels of power. That's why people don't like to hear what we, there needs to be. There needs to be evidence. They're like, well, you know, not everyone can go to the pub. Man, how many fucking people? Oh, my God. Four years you couldn't find me a scrap of evidence, a scintilla of it that doesn't point at what, what was their big evidence here? That he had a conversation with somebody about using protection? That he has a nasty-ass lifestyle, and uh, he might have given them an STD, so they went and got checked out? They presented that as in... 
he forcibly did something to someone? That That's your evidence? That's your bombshell? And words. I mean, we just watched a high-profile fucking case with words. And those words were damning if you just read them. Because they take from survivors, <laughs> for real. They piece together things, and they try to make it sound real. And again, maybe he is guilty. But you got to fucking prove it. I mean, you we are not a courtroom. We can make up our mind and talk about these things. But at the end of the day, what happens is you don't go, we, we've gone past observing. Socially, you have pressures, again, at the highest positions of power that are saying, This person needs to be destroyed. They know what they do. I mean, again, they're they're calling for police report after the fact. And you will get quantity out of that, which will look damning. Like, like the media has been talking about a police report that it's there. Well, you know what? Just a day before that, there was no police reports. Then there suddenly was, you know, because they've been calling for one. Now, do we get, do we find out what's there? Absolutely not, because of the protections that are in place. See, th this is another thing that bothers me. The protections in it's not it's in the courtroom too. Any other thing, people agree. You know, theft, whatever, man. You know, you have the right to face an accuser and everything. You don't even get that basic right. You don't even get to know who's accusing you. That's not right. And then you got you got freaking governmental entities hitting up places like TikTok. Like, I got an article on that. Give me a second. Uh, also, they say, I'm also writing to Channel 4 regarding these allegations. And we urge both the BBC and Channel 4 to do everything possible, not only to assure that its employees, contributors, and suppliers feel safe at work, but also create an environment whereby people can speak out when procedures are breached. Now, do you think any of those places will stand? Now, you also have um, Rumble. Rumble made a statement. Here's TikTok. You want to see TikToks? Give me a minute. This stuff drives me nuts, though. <sighs> Let me run my cigarette. A cigar. I said cigarette. I heard my door open. Give me one second. I think I might have a kid walk down here. Matt. I'll read until the one pops up. So this is to... TikTok. Dr. Theo Bertram, Director of Governmental Relations, Europe, TikTok. So, dear Theo, I am writing concerning the serious allegations regarding Russell Brand in the context as a user of TikTok with more in the context as a user of TikTok with more than 2.2 million followers on the platform. So this is the same organization they're saying you know it, it's raising questions with the broadcasters who previously employed brand or production companies who have employed him to examine both the culture of the industry oh i got Look, a kid I over here the party. oh yeah hey go go throw that in the thing okay um, yeah, take it. Yeah, yeah, go take it you did great good job go throw it out very good uh, it's not locked. There you go. I didn't lock it. So you come down. Go take it. Go throw it up there. Thanks, Daddy. Yeah. She's coming back down. <laughs> she's coming back down and pulling the potties. She's. 
she brought me a brand new uh a brand new pull up. It's like a poop in the potty, Dad. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's great. <laughs> Put it on over there. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, the absurdity. It's funny though. I mean, she's she's doing a great job though. That's hilarious. They're so cute though. You know. <laughs> I wish I could be proud, you know, of man. You know, I, I, I use the bathroom. Great. Yes. Uh, but no, I mean, it, it is a good time. She's been, ah, she's a smart little cookie. So she's learning uh, to be more independent. And you always give that positive feedback because, you know, it is. <laughs> it is something to give positive feedback for. But anyway, so uh, you have the culture, media, sports, raising questions with the broadcasters who previously employed Mr. Brand or production companies who have employed him to examine both the culture of the industry in the past and whether that culture still prevails today. Although Mr. Brand no longer appears on television, he has he now has a follower base on social media, including on TikTok, where this weekend he republished his preemptive response to the accusations made against him by the Sunday Times and the Channel 4 dispatches. While we recognize that TikTok is not the creator of the content published by Mr. Brand, and his content may be, may be within the community guidelines set out by the platform. We are concerned that he may be able to profit from his content on the platform. So they're the ones. And, and look at this shit. His Plato firm. You know, you can see who's called. Th these are, this is an MP saying he should not be able to profit. From his work on TikTok. Do you think the government should be able to reach in and to totally destroy your ability? Like, like who else has had this done to them? Who else have we seen that has had, again, governmental influence placed, not just on your, your mainstream jobs? He made some powerful enemies. You want to tell me that out of all the other places that we've seen that the guy with the powerful enemies because he's been taking on the uh, he's been he's been taking on military industrial complex because he's been talking about uh, his thoughts on everything from the jab to, to politics and more. He hasn't been walking lockstep. You want to tell me that that the government responding that is that doesn't. That doesn't showcase. retaliation because it show sure looks like it this sure looks like it i mean i i've i've never seen i've seen them ask for investigation before i've never seen them contacting social media platforms and saying we want you to monetize that's what they're doing they're trying to find out whether or not he can still make money they are taking away a citizen's ability to make money to support themselves. And again, he has money now. So it's he's in a he's in a position where the majority of people would not be. What's up, kiddo? I was here. I I put up my poop and Sissy's toilet is broken. It's broken? How is it broken? I was pooping two times <laughs> and it got broken. Oh, you, I... got it, you got it stuck, it won't flush? Yep. Okay, I'll I'll flush it a little bit. Okay, give me five. Yep. Good job, by the way. <laughs> Dad, you do the upside in again, flush. Yeah. yeah. Here, let's uh I know you washed your hands, but here, let me let me uh You don't have any poop? Uh yeah, we're gonna wash your we're gonna wipe your hands down, okay? Here. Yeah. Let me put that thing on there. Okay. There we go. <laughs> do I have any food? No. There's cheese sticks upstairs. You wanna go get a couple? Yeah. I'll open them for you. All right. Mm, give me a kiss. Mwah. Go get a go get a, a couple of cheese sticks and I'll open them for you, okay? Yeah. If you want them. <laughs> uh, no, she's saying that the toilet upstairs got broken. She's saying she said, "Sissy, that she's four. She see we have a we have a bathroom upstairs, and when it's got one of those little button flush things, and if you push it too many times, it it won't flush again. So she thinks it's broken." It's fine though. It, it 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 doesn't allow you to continue to waste water. You know, it's one of those. So she thinks it's broken there. Potty traded, baby. Anyway, 
So they continue by saying, <laughs> we would be great. Yes, this is, uh, I, I realize some people put on some very professional stuff. I, I do not pretend to be a fucking professional. I have a family. I have two little girls. And, um, you know, <laughs> somebody at one time was like, well, can't you lock them out? Yeah, I, I could do that, but I won't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, I like them in there, especially when I'm covering like, crazy topics like that you know a four-year-old won't understand that but gives me a break sometimes i need mentally because some of this stuff yeah it, it's it, it's awful stuff we talk about awful topics so they continue saying we would be grateful if you could confirm whether mr brand is able to monetize his tiktok posts including his video related to the serious allocations against him and what the platform is doing to ensure that creators are not able to use the platform to undermine the welfare of victims of inappropriate and potentially illegal behavior this is also so this is not what people people are not reading the other part of that People are not, see, they're focusing on Russell Brand. You see the bottom of that? What the bottom of that says is basically they're also aiming at whether you and I can talk about this shit. That's what that is. That is the, that is an overreach that is trying to make sure, where's the uh, cheese sticks? I was deciding to, I lied to chocolate milk and I sucked about it. I love chocolate milk. Okay, well, I'll get you some in a minute. Okay. Here, you want this for a minute? You can have a sip of it. You have a, a little sip. You've been very good today. Tiny, 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 tiny. Okay. Now go upstairs. Go upstairs. I'll get you some chocolate milk and stuff in a little bit. Okay. Now I'll get you some cheese sticks. Wait, Dad, just one. What? Just one, one. Well, go get me the cheese sticks. I'll open them for you. You get them for me. Get me or get the bag. If you bring the bag to me, I'll get them out for you. Okay. You can get them. Uh, she, she's learned like, please, 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 please. I'm like, I'm not telling you no. <laughs> she's not asking me to go get them. She's, she's asking me. She's asking for permission to get in. I was like, I already told you to get them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, so. I look at this and it disturbs me. Because like I said, the. The. What the platform is doing to ensure that creators are not able to use the platform to undermine the welfare of victims of inappropriate or potentially illegal behavior. That doesn't say whether or not Russell Brand is able to do it. It says creators plural. To me, what that sounds like is pressuring them where you can't talk about this stuff. They've already tried that. They told us, like, I've been telling you this for a fucking year plus. You had politicians come out and say with un, un, no uncertain terms that they planned on changing things so the herd stuff would never happen again. And what they meant is that you and I would never be able to see it again because of, quote, unquote, protecting the victims. Although the only victim in that was a Depp and Depp, the only reason you know about it is because you had a public trial. That's why the world found out about it. Oh, there they are. OK, you want two? You want two of these? You want yeah, two? I got two for you and two for me. You <laughs> did two for me? That is so nice. And there's two. Yeah, I know. I see that. Thank you. Here, I'll open these. And it's a talk right now. Man, these are hard to open. You like a cat in the uh, cheese stick. You like a cheese stick. Yeah, you look like a cheese stick. Here you you like a cheese stick, too. Oh, I do. I think I'm a little... I think I'm a little fat for a cheese stick. You know? That's two for you. And Thank two. you. I appreciate that. that I put my cheese one you. and... Here you go. There's yours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hey, switched here, Can you go put those in the refrigerator so they don't go bad? Wait, yeah, I can't do it. I'll do it in a minute then. You take yours up. You can watch some stuff and I'll get you uh, something in a minute, okay? The truck is back. Yes. Uh -huh. Go. You can go uh, watch your. You can have a little TV time. Yeah, you can have a little TV time. Go in your room, or you play. You can play and um, have a little TV time. Okay. Which play I'm going to play? I don't know. Play with your Paw Patrol stuff. Like play with your. You got your 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 Barbie Dream House. Maybe with the poop in the pot. <laughs> They're going to do that. 
Okay, well, they can do that in the Barbie Dream House. Why don't you go show them how to do it? Because you're so such a smart, such a good girl. Yeah. All right. Love you. <laughs> uh, she said, maybe they'll play pooping in the body. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Let's see here. Uh, Amy, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership. Welcome, Tugs, Thugs. Subi Sue, thanks for the five. You're amazing for all you do. Thank you. Hey, thank you all. Like, again, you know, platforms, like creators forget this. The platform is only as effective as the people that show up. The people that carry this. And again, you know, I'll make this very clear. I don't know the truth about the Russell Brand, but I have some serious reservations about the way this went on. And I had some very serious reservations about the way this stuff is happening. Because like I said, this is looks like severe overreach. And it looks like them pressuring not just Russell Brand, but it looks like them pressuring you and I to talk, you know, not to be able to talk about that. And they will cave to this kind of pressure. They do. They very much do. In fact, these assholes may uh, may enact laws where where poof, you can't talk anymore. Clear as mud. What's up, by the way? Hope you're doing well. Thanks for five. I don't think you put hey politicians accuse of stuff get their salaries frozen. I'm sure they don't. <laughs> I'm sure they don't. You know, I'm sure they get all the benefits in the world, <laughs> and even if they. Uh, were found out to do something. A lot of them still get to keep like health benefits and everything else. Trophy wife. Thanks for the vibe. Tug. Enjoy these days. It flies right by. At Barbie Dream Plane. Good evening from East Alabama. Oh, well, thank you there. Yeah. I enjoy them. I, you know, they're cute. Like, like I said, I'm, uh, I, some days I welcome the interruption in this stuff we talk about because it does frustrate me, <laughs> you know, and, because you can see what's happening here. It's not it's not happening in a vacuum. So then you had Rumble. <clears throat> excuse me. Then you had Rumble sound off on this too. So Rumble was also contacted. Like that's, this is nuts. And Rumble, they put out a statement that said, F that basically. We're not doing it. Which I have to commend them for. That this is a, this is the kind of response that you need. So Rumble said, today we received an extremely disturbing letter from a committee member in the UK Parliament. While Rumble obviously deplores SA, R, all of that stuff, I'm just going to say all, you know, because again, not like this would be monetized or for real, <laughs> uh, and believes that both uh, alleged victims and the accused are entitled to a full and serious investigation. It is vital to note that recent allegations against Russell Brand have nothing to do with the content on Rumble's platform. Just yesterday, YouTube announced that based solely on the media's accusations, it was barring Mr. Brand from monetizing his video content. Rumble stands for very different values. We have devoted ourselves to the vital cause of defending a free internet, meaning an internet where no one arbitrarily dictates which ideas can and cannot be heard or which citizens may or may not be entitled to a platform. We regard it as deeply inappropriate and dangerous that a UK parliament would attempt to control who is allowed to speak on a platform or earn a living doing so. Singling out an individual, especially, we're not talking about an individual that has been convicted of anything. But, like, that should, like, how is this not illegal, what they've just done? You know why it's not illegal? Because ultimately, when when the the people in power they abuse that system. You know what happens? They get to decide whether or not they're guilty. And they're always fucking innocent because they own the watchdog groups. This is the watchdog group. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't... See, that's the thing you need to realize about this. This isn't just UK Parliament. This is their watchdog. They're the ones that are supposed to keep all of all types of behavior in check, including, again, the, the companies that have safeguards or not, if they're ensuring that. And very much so. They need to have those. I mean, we we obviously know the terrible things they've happened, media, Hollywood and more. But on top of that. 
they're going after a singular citizen here that has not been convicted of a crime. They are convicting them. And they are referring to the people that made these statements as victims. And that is bullshit because they're not. They're alleged victims. Because it's all allegation. This is where we are now. I've been talking about I've been talking about this subject accusation culture that's what I like to call it because again you know there's a there is a, a people like to call talk about cancel culture and, and and it definitely exists you know people are like oh that's a that's a right wing conspiracy bullshit man <laughs> look this this is perfect proof that it exists you have a government power Telling platforms, do this. You know this comes with an implied or else. You will or we'll punish you. We'll fine you. We'll do whatever. I mean, what happens? See, it's interesting to see a platform say no. It's interesting also to see those that that are paper tigers. You know, I'm curious where like a Twitter will fall because ultimately Twitter is hit or miss. They say, yes, we believe in the fundamentals of free speech. Elon is sounded off on uh, Russell Brand, but they're also telling you that their uh, their earnings are down by around 60 percent as far as ad revenue and, you know, really just making money on the platform. So when they're when they're telling you they're in a rebuild phase, when they brought in the C, you know, when they brought in uh the CEO that they did. Will they really stand there? Will they shadow ban? And, and, you know, here's the question. Even if they stand for a Russell Brand, would they stand for you? How far down the rabbit hole does that go? I, I feel like Rumble, you know, now there are some flaws in Rumble. They will remove content for stuff. There, there, there are ways that, especially if you were small and accused of something, It'd be, it'd be something different there. But say so anyway, the uh, we regarded as deeply inappropriate and dangerous that a UK parliament attempted to control who was allowed to speak. Uh, singling out an individual and demanding his ban is even more disturbing given the absence of any connection between the allegation and his content on Rumble. We don't agree with the behavior of many Rumble creators, but we refuse to penalize them for actions that have nothing to do with our platform. Although it may be politically and socially easier for Rumble to join a cancel culture mob, doing so would be a violation of the company's values and ethics. We emphatically reject the UK Parliament's demands. They will re- they will respond in kind. You watch. There will be fines. There will be there will be banning of. Uh, you've seen you've seen different um, platforms end up with. All types of, of targeting like this. I, I, I very much stand behind a statement like this. Very much so. You, you know, if Rumble would make their their um, their platform easier to connect. See, see, okay, a lot of people don't know how like connection works with uh, with a YouTube. For you to set up streams. You go in and, and you use like a a middleman company, StreamYards. That's what I'm using right now. Easy one to connect to. With with YouTube, it's literally a click of a button. Rumble is harder. You have to go in. You have to uh, set a stream key, all kinds of other stuff. And oftentimes, doing that, like I'm doing it on a mobile device, and, and it, it's it makes it almost impossible to switch back and forth. You know because. Uh, like the StreamYard, um, the StreamYard activation for it, it won't stay open. You know, again, even if you you know open multiple windows, you just can't make it work correctly. So, 
it quite literally becomes a, well, I can't, I can't make that work. <laughs> you, know, you know, if I were setting it up on my uh, desktop, what I'm talking about here, that'd be fine. But in order to have an effective live stream, you have to set it up hours from now. I mean, you know, uh, integrating across platforms. I, I, I do think that that <clears throat> I, I don't dislike rumble. I, I've disliked a couple of things that have happened there. I just like the uh, if if somebody files a DMCA takedown, they have an automated process. You can't appeal. That's a, that's a problem. But their stance, this is a good stance because they like I say our platform. This is how our platform operates, and it doesn't matter whether or not the UK Parliament tells us they need to shut that down because ultimately, that's not what we do. I have to commend that, but I want to show you some stuff. Okay, what disturbs me is this move. Give me one minute. That we're seeing as far as disconnection. All right. So the first move that you saw, like I said, this stuff, it almost follows a uh, a playbook, as it were. The first thing that you see is a disconnection by the agency. You know, you have an agent. Most places have an agent of some sort. They just, they come straight out and they say, they not only disconnect, but they went further. They actually joined the mob. They noted, Russell Brand has categorically and vehemently denied the allegation made in 2020. But we now believe we were horribly misled by him. <laughs> you make these fuckers money. Like you piling in and man, like, like this is what, this is the kind of stuff that bothers me. You know, they don't have to say a damn thing, but they're like, oh, for the good of us. Now, I mean, I get what they're doing, but at the same time, you need to, somebody needs to go into Hollywood and um, open an agency called Uncancelable, you know, where, Barring any, uh, barring a conviction in the courtroom, you withstand social pressures and you withstand the social tide. There's you some money right there. Because this, in this day and age, and remember, if you complain about it, you have weirdos like, say, an Eve Barlow that are out there saying, oh, for those men who are afraid they'll be next, well, don't be arping women. And it's like, are you fucking, you know, if you had to worry about this, if an Eve Marlowe had to worry about this kind of stuff, that any just rando could, and you, you should, because it can happen. It happens, it happens much less to, but it does happen. But you have them saying that, and they're saying, well, you know, we terminated everything there. Give me a minute. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing back? I am pick up garbage. Oh, you got that garbage here. You want to pick up some garbage here? Can you take this upstairs and throw this away for me? Can you put this in your garbage truck and throw it away? Come here. Can you take that upstairs to the garbage in your garbage truck? There. Throw it away for me. She's got a Paw Patrol garbage truck. Are you picking up garbage? There you go. Actually, check this out. Here's how you do it. Check this out. Is there something in here? Oh, there's stuff in here. Okay. Yeah. Put that in there then. Take it. Go take the garbage. Boom, boom. Yeah, <laughs> the garbage can here. No, no, it goes upstairs. It, that, that has to go to the garbage dump upstairs. <laughs> John S. thinks are 10. Tug, there's a pastor in Canada named Arthur Paul. Polonsky, is that right? Who stood up to the beer bug lockdowns and inspections? He was the he was only just released from jail on time served after being remanded. See that, that's nuts. That's nuts. 
you know, you should, you, you are in real time saying governmental overreach. You're seeing exactly what they can do. You may hear her. She's up the top of the stairs. She got a garbage truck. She's driving her out. You also, you have gig cancellations. So, you have Paramount Plus pulling him. Okay. Go play, kiddo. You have a... <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to give me a minute. I'm going to have to get her something. You know, I'm going to turn something on for just a second. I think I have something that's a minute and long. Give me one minute. I'm going to go get her something real quick. I'm going to get her her uh, thing in, in... Huh? Chocolate milk. Yes, I'm going to get your chocolate milk. Yeah. She brought me a cup. That's why I'm... This cup. Yes, I bet I see your cup. Yes, I saw you bring it. So I'm going to turn on Isaac Baruch. He's the only thing that's long enough to do that. So if somebody comes in, please let them know. I just I break for one second. I'm going to get chocolate milk for somebody. You know, they brought me a cup. So I saw you win. Hiya. Hiya. You hi. Want to, you want to say hi for a minute? Yep. Hi. Okay. I'm so, saying it too. Um, no, we're going to go get chocolate milk. Okay. Yeah. You got your garbage truck you can carry it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to turn this on. Okay. Ability, heal. And and, and 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 move on, move on, and and for Johnny, Johnny, you know, it's, his family has been completely wrecked by all of this stuff, and it's not, it's 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 not, uh, it's not fair. It's not right. What ha what she did and what happened for so many people to get affected from this. It's, it's insane and Mr. Baruch, this, how this happened. And Mr. Baruch, if in fact she's telling the truth, and if in fact Mr. Depp, who has engaged in enormous rage and domestic abuse and violence of Amber over a period of time that you wouldn't know about, then maybe it's time for him to take responsibility, don't you think? Objection, Your Honor. Specu What's the objection? Speculation. Lack of foundation. Relevance. Those speculations. It's, it, he, he just went off on this rant and rave about assuming that she's... You, you asked questions. I, mean, I, I didn't ask a question that right. launched that. I, I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay, right, you don't... I'll, I'll ask this. Okay. Mr. Brooch. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, she brought me a chocolate milk thing. She's like, give me a chocolate milk, Dad. She said it before, but she brought me a cup. So I was like, yeah, I'll get your chocolate milk. Uh, let's see. John S. Thanks for tuning Oh, yeah, I got that one. All right. Yeah, I have to look up uh, that case because that's kind of... It's kind of crazy. I need a hold video, by the way. I need just some music that'll play for like a minute and a half. <laughs> you know, but I do stuff. All right, let me hit a few more of these and I'll just to make this point here. One second here. With that gig that I was talking about. So as far as gigs are concerned, again, you have places. I wondered, okay, so the Wanderlust festival i wondered did they pull not just because of blowback but did they pull because safety concerns i mean you think like, like this isn't just if if you're motivating at the highest level of power if you have convicted somebody by social media you're talking to the uh, from the highest to the lowest rungs in society now, in that, I'm sure that you're broadcasting to a few mentally ill people out there, severely mentally ill. And one of them, I don't know, maybe they have a dog that uh, thinks that, you know, Russell Brand, you know, he, he um, let's, let's say he should uh, be Minecrafted. And, yeah, you have to wonder. You have to wonder about how that goes. All right, there's a, give me a minute here. Takes them a second to, to load in a couple of these. His his publisher, so he has a publisher, a book publisher. The book publisher, they decided 
they're going to cut ties as well. One minute. Turn that up here. There it is. So you have, they're pausing. They're pausing for future, as they say, though. You know, when they say pause, uh-huh. So Russell Brand, he's already done the autobiography. He's done political books. But this was about recovery. This is about substance use and abuse. That's the kind of insidious nature of this, you know. <laughs> this doesn't allow you to help people that, that truly do could use help in a lot of instances. You know, there are people out there like substance abuse. You already, it's already uh, stigmatized and demonized. People need help with it. Subi Sue, thanks for the five. Bravo. <laughs> Getting that chocolate milk. That's what I'm bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they note, though, in that, that. These are very serious allegations, and in light of them, they decided to pause all future publishing with them. Again, the word there that should bother you are allegations. That should be the, the main troubling detail, allegation. It's not just, it's not an employer here. These are, these are places that you have deals with, where you're putting out your own, who knows what you've put into that, how much... Uh, how much time you've put into it. You know, what's crazy too. Okay. So the reason they targeted, the reason they target social media is because of this. It's the one place that people become curious and you can actually still maintain. If you look at his numbers here, his numbers currently notice the growth here and you notice the growth spikes. Bam. See that right there? I mean, he jumps up 40, thousand subscribers and what they're saying is the platforms don't ban him but don't allow him well they are kind of <clears throat> they they are saying ban him but they're saying it in the undertone but what they're saying is demonetize him for sure he's not allowed to have monetary consideration for any of his stuff see that again makes it sound like a a, a, a plot to shut someone down because it's not just about uh the video in question, that one video, if they were like hey, that one video. I would still consider that an overreach, but, you know, that would make more sense. The entire platform, he's not allowed to to bring up anything whatsoever. Stuff that, again, has been hypercritical of the, the very institutions that are that are targeting the man now. And. You get from the majority of them, of course you get. Yeah, of course, of course. YouTube, of course, pulled his uh, monetization. They were the first in there. And we're finding out the reason they did that was because government leaned on them. Now, again, I was talking about that that case from Rolling Stone. So this is actually, uh, this is actually well-documented case, too. I, I pulled up something about it. I was looking at it today. Because I was doing a refresher on it, just uh, I thought I might mention it, and I mentioned it on Twitter. But the Rolling Stone story again, you know what's crazy is the person who wrote this, their um, their Twitter's still up. It just died in 2014. It just stops. But you can see it is a mirror. It was pre Me Too. But it's a mirror of how this stuff goes on. It's exactly the same, you know, and you, what it goes through is it tells you the story. It tells you how exactly that story was put together. Her Twitter account, though, let me pull up her Twitter account, okay? Because this woman's Twitter account is still up. This is something I found very fascinating because, like I said, it uh, it truly... It truly reflects. It's the same playbook. It's just there's much more behind it. See, I mean, if you look, this is the person that, again, this they created. It, it destroyed them pretty much because they cost Rolling Stone millions. They weren't just embarrassed. They, <clears throat> they don't get embarrassed. What they do is uh, they just double and triple down. Angel, thanks for the 10. I'm beyond infuriated about this tug. Indeed. It's really eating me up and hitting me hard. I'm not even a brand fan, but this is disgusting. Again, yeah, exactly. 
the uh, what wor- uh, the world has learned nothing, and I'm shattered. WTF is going on? How? Because they they won't. <laughs> they 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 don't. That's why that when when people are like, man, we, we the Depp case still gets brought up. Yeah, it, it needs to be an object lesson because apparently nobody learned from it. Well, the people who needed to, many people learned from it, but the people that the the like I said, there was a playbook that was going on. You saw commentary right from go from politicians telling you, we're going to ensure, we need to make laws that ensure that this never happens again. They just circumvented that. They're like, fuck those laws. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do it how we want. And that's how they're doing it. Sandra, thank you. Well, thank you for the membership. Welcome to Tux Thugs. Random girl, thank you for the two and the super sticker. I appreciate that. Thank you. And STX, thank you for the four ninety nine. And the one there is that your first super chat? Is that what? Yeah, first super chat. That's what it says underneath it. Well, thank you. That is that is awesome. Appreciate that. So check this out. You can see them celebrating there. They're like. Oh, the Washington Post wrote an article about me and how my UVA came to light. You can see how narcissism and uh, entitlement played a huge role in SA that they they wrote about. Again, this is, it's before the blowback and it it destroyed them utterly. But you see, it looks just like what you see now, only post I'm going to say post me here, you know, like me too still exists, but it is not at its height. But it's still the 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 culture that it created this nastiness. We moved well away from empathy for for people. That are telling you, um, yeah, I've been through horrible stuff and now it's become accusation culture. I mean, like I said, it stands as a, a testament to everything that's wrong. And, you know, what's bad is, see, this is why you bring up old cases, because people don't even know this stuff happened. Many people, for whatever reason, one of the main reasons is because once it's settled, they, of course, will never talk about it again. You know, they're like, no way are we going to admit that we ever got it wrong in the past, you know. And that's Rolling Stone. One of the so Rolling Stone is a is a huge backer of Listen and Believe. Rolling Stone has come after me several times myself because I don't I don't believe accusations. I mean, I look for every, the words there. I if I look at somebody in their talking, I I may look at them and. Engage credibility if I, you know, and, and, and take my opinion on what they're saying. Because you you, you look at believability, but the, the story itself, these stories are so horrendous. Anyone can make them believable. The problem is, again, they become anonymous. So you got a shadow figure. They don't even use the real voice. They hire voice actors. And if they do it correctly, they do it well. Like Channel Four didn't do it well. They hired. Uh, they, it sounds like an AI bot, but they say it's a. They say it's a voice actress, but you saw how that came across. They put in dramatic music behind everything. It, it is the epitome of a hit piece, and it works. The scariest part isn't that they make hit pieces; is that it works. So here's your charity commission. So Russell Brown's addiction. I said Brown Brand's Addiction Foundation. It's under examination. As a watchdog group assesses whether or not it has a regulatory role to play in his foundation, whether or not they can come in and either force him out or force themselves in. Again, over accusations. This will be weaponized again and again and again and again and again. It'll never stop. Never stop. It is a powerful weapon. And that will not, that, that does not service survive. People are, are so sick of this stuff. 
That's why that's why there's an attempt not to just silence a ram, but silence other people because people are sick of trial by media. Because they get it wrong. I mean, that, that for depth, man, I sat there for fucking years waiting for them to put out anything. What was bad is they didn't. What you found out was happening is that you would have PR companies that would contact and feed them stories. You notice how stories are all similar? Why do you think that is? Now, some of that's because uh, some of these groups are owned by, the, like, like Rolling, uh, Rolling Stone, Variety, Deadline. They're all they're all owned by the same people. So, of course, they reflect the same subject matter, same mentality, sometimes the same script. But when you find out, when you see proof that, you know, they're fed stories, they're told what to think. They have now governmental entities that are that are. That are interceding. I mean, that's just it's it's unreal. So you again, his charity organization, the charity. They said we are aware of concerns raised in the media regarding the chair of trustees of the stay safe or stay free foundation. We are currently assessing information to determine if there is a regulatory role. So they're looking to see whether or not they can they can do something there. Again, a regulatory body. <laughs> so his daughter thinks of Vive. Does JD realize AH would have uh, I'm gonna say Minecrafted him? Um yeah, I would say yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go with yes. I'm gonna go with an emphatic yes. You know. Take from how you will on that. <laughs> v. Give me a second. V thinks for the 15 months. Didn't Rolling Stone magazine? Yes, Duke Lacrosse. Indeed. It Duke Lacrosse. They uh they brought that up and ah, look how that that turned out. Again, they, they keep getting it wrong. Also, Rolling Stone. So they've been caught making up anonymous sources. You know, the media, same media that 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 threw a shit fit about where I had talked to an uh, to Depp's lawyer, um, Adam Waldman. And I was thinking about that. And I was like, you know what they're really mad about? When I said I had anonymous sources, I had they were real. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, the anonymity is supposed to, they say, oh, well, you, we can use a million of them. And they're like, oh my God, how dare you use one? Why? Because I, I think they're all fake. I think they're all the ones they create like half the time. They're fucking fake. And that's happened. Many times with, you know, media also, there are, there's some pretty good movies out there. Shattered Glass is one, you know, where you have award winning journalists just making up shit. They just flat out make up stories and get caught. And it's happened multiple times. Heather thinks it too. Mainstream media is all bought and paid for. They're pointless indeed. You know, and, and I'm not saying, like, like, when we have these conversations, I'm not saying I can't get something wrong. That happens. But, you know, I, I'm when we're talking, I, I hope, like, some YouTubers have a staff of stuff. I, I don't. This is me. This is my part time. This is not my job. This is just something when I find something that's interesting, I look at it. I look at it like um like a puzzle. You know, it, it's a puzzle there. Now again, you know, that I, I I have to remind myself constantly that it is a there there's the human element in play. But trying to understand whether or not something is real, I mean that's that's what's supposed to be investigative journalism. I'm not calling myself a journalist, by the way, just to say, but there are some very good investigative journalists out there. A lot of them are not in the media. There are actually a few uh, good journalists themselves that are out there. Most of them, if they do traffic in the media, there's a handful I've seen traffic in the media. But a lot of them are not there. They go to other platforms. Because they can't, they're not allowed to do actual investigative journalism. See, what the media wants is they want a headline right now. You know, they want it. They, they don't want you to research. They want you to take the time to actually read those uh, 
thousand page documents or, you know, thousand pages of documents, rather. They want you to take the time. They want you to be there first. And being there first does not mean you're right. You know, I mean, we still reward first. We reward it on this platform, you know. <laughs> but first doesn't necessarily, if people are just reporting what's said in the media, that's okay. But to say they know what's happening. I mean, right now we have a firestorm of people that, um, how do I say? I've been disappointed by the reaction of some people that that they they um they note that they are ardent anti listening believers. They they believe in tracking evidence, and they bought hook, line, and sinker into the uh, the text message thing. They looked at his damning evidence, proving that he had, you know, he had taken someone forcibly. And I was like, did you not read it? Because that's not what it says. It's like you have to be hypercritical, and, and it's an you know I, that's that's not a condemnation. I mean, it's 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 a reminder that you have to be hyper vigilant all the time. He could be lying too. That's it, what you have to figure out, you know. And you're not going to be of the problem. The, the nastiness again. I can't go in if there's a uh, something crazy that happens. I oftentimes will go into a timeline. I'll look through somebody's timeline. I'll, I'll see what's there. I, I mean, I can't find that stuff out because they're ghosts. You know, and the reason I mentioned that, so in there was a, the first case like that, this I covered was uh, voice actor Vic Mignogna. One of the people that came out said that at a convention, he had witnessed a female being grabbed by the hair and propositioned as Vic Mignogna whispered in uh, this person's ear like a snake. That's, that's how he described it. Well, going through his social media, you found out he was like, I, I hate it. I detest this guy. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Well, that wasn't true. <clears throat> what happened was the you could track down the date of that convention. Vic Mignogna really was there. And this guy was there. This guy was talking about hair of course but he wasn't talking about pulled hair and stuff what he was talking about is man Vic Mignogna's hair it's so lovely I love his flowing locks in fact he sang his praise all the way up until you had this giant cancellation event in fact there were statements like um, Vic Mignogna is the only person that I would that I would trust in Hollywood to actually give my phone number to like that's how what it you know I mean it was it was an out and out lie. You can go through and you can piece this, but that the poison here, like I said, unless a, an accuser goes, well, you can't see what they've done. And if you've gone back pre internet, you know, or or fucking pre Twitter, like there is nothing to track down. You have to take. You may be able to track down something, but more often than not, it is going to just be words. And again, maybe it did happen, but you can't, how do you prove it? And, and, and worse still, how does law enforcement prove that? You know, one of the things, especially with the UK, that scares the shit out of me with that is that you, you see the, the push. If there is a push from the highest position of authority in the UK with them calling for police, what, what do you think is in the police bet to interest? To find someone guilty. I mean, you're talking again, if it's regulatory bodies, who controls their money? Like that's a frightening thing for me. I want there to be investigations, thorough investigations, but biasing. And that that's what this stuff is. Like this is a biasing effect. So what they're telling you, you know, it, it's bad again. It is an insane world where I'm told that asking about evidence, that makes you a sexist. That makes you a monster. That makes you pro the worst things out there. It was like, no, actually, it makes you uh, anti those things. Because, again, maybe if we can actually get rid of false allegations and we can get we can prove like if we find damning proof that this if we're digging through here and we did find some damning proof like it was Shia LaBeau I mean Shia LaBeau admitted to shit he just haphazardly admitted to uh putting his hand on his accuser 
All right. It was in a throwaway comment. I didn't see anyone commenting on that stuff or anything. I went through a interview there and, and he was talking to uh, what's his name? John Berthall, the walking dead guy, Shane. And he makes a few comments like that. Now he, he denies the overall allegations, the, the worst of the worst, but he admits. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he at least admits to part of it. People were applauding that too, being like, man, yeah, he's getting hell. I was like, no, he didn't get help. He actually, um, he didn't like, he didn't want a therapist. So he went and found him uh, at first an AA sponsor to deal with something that could be a branch off of substance abuse, but they're not, they're not uh, equipped to deal with. They're not in any way licensed professional. And then he started um, dealing with Buddhist monks or something like that. It was just, it's strange, <laughs> but you want to find pieces out there and you're not always going to find it in mission. Hell, you may not find anything. They may be guilty of sin. But again, how do you prove it? And if the police come up with the same thing, I think citizens oftentimes do more thorough investigations than if the um, if all the elements are available. I think citizens because, you know, you you don't have that, that's not a shot necessarily at, at the police with that either, because even the best person, best detective, they, they how many cases have they caught? How many do they have that are still open? How many are they working on? Do they have all this time just to dedicate to one case? They may if it's high, high profile, but we can just average people oftentimes. They catch more. And trusting the media, oh, fuck that. Like for them to pretend that they're not only investigators, but they are a judge and they are a career and a life executioner. No. John, thing for five. Stuff like Kick Vic is why Kiana air hugs fans. Yes, that's actually a lot of people, you know, I understood why. So in that first case, I understood why a Vic Mignogna. People like that can get falsely accused. They, um, Mignogna, he was a voice actor. And very big in the dub community, like anime dubs. You know, I'm sure most people are aware of anime. If you're not Japanese, con uh, Japanese, I hate to use the word cartoon, but I, mean, I think that's simplification that works. Cartoon, eh, it's not really cartoon, but you know, you, you understand it's animated. Um, you'll see it dubbed over. And when it's dubbed over, you have voice actors. Well, he's big. And I went to conventions to, you know, watch behavior and stuff. And this guy, he would have people come up to him and tell them, you know, they tell them the worst stories ever. And they'd be like, you know what? What you were working on there, it pulled me through this stuff. And man, people, they break down. And when he was being accused, like Vic Mignogna, he stood up to, to give this one lady a, a hug after told him that, and he had somebody that was working with him saying, no, 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 you're not, you don't need to do that. And he's like, you know what, if, uh, if changing who I am, if, if I have to do that, it's not worth it. So, yeah, and you, you understand how some people, I mean, even, even the most, even the most kind thing can get you accused. And, and again, that's saying that there's an incident at all. And again, that's not comparing these cases. It's just saying, believing accusations. Where does that end up? Well, it ends up sometimes with you convicting people. But first of all, you, you shouldn't be convicting anyone. But let's be honest, in this day and age, it, uh, and if you will face a mob and fucking hate like you have never seen. Just for calling for evidence, you will face hatred because it makes you a target. And if you think about that, if you are targeted that way, then what do you think uh, the person that is accused, what do they end up facing? Joetta, thanks for the 10 there. I blame much on 24-7, 365 news that later from the 80s, 80s well, 80s, 80s became incestuously multiplying. Yeah, and it has to be shocking and more. It's like a reality TV. It, it's... um. 
journalism now, even mainstream media, is more tabloid journalism. You know, now I'm not saying that I I don't like my, you want people need to click on something. So I'll put a word like bombshell on it. But you know what? I make sure my content and, and that is not misleading. <laughs> you know, if I think something's a bombshell, I put it on there. But you know, what they do is. They promote, they like to compare doing something like that to promoting what they do, which is fakery. And it's like, no, man, you know, no. You make something stand out and you you present it. Like today, typically I don't I don't like I don't like getting worked up about stuff anyway, but this stuff just annoys me so much sometimes. <laughs> it makes me want to get into that fist pounding, yelling about things, you know. <laughs> Uh, Dreadnought, thanks to the 10. The worst part of this situation is that it proves once again how easy it is to destroy someone's life. One anonymous claim and they're fair game. Regardless of the truth, it's guilty until proven innocent. Yes, that's um, that's not a standard we should ever adopt. Guilty until proven innocent. And people will tell you all the time, the scariest people out there, they'll tell you innocent until proven guilty is only applicable in the courtroom. And it's like, are you, are you kidding me? So you're saying you would be okay with uh, with being judged by the same standards? Well, 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 of course not. <laughs> of course not. No one wants to be found guilty simply because of accusations. But it's not the same, you know. <laughs> when 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 people find themselves in the crosshairs, it's a it's a it's a tad bit different than you know different rules. That's why I um, that's why when I covered Dan Wooten, you know, Dan, again, Dan, the, the things against Dan Wooten are just allegations. But Dan Wooten, he's a cancel culture. He's one of he helped build this thing. When people like that get accused, I'm just like, fuck them. They told me they were guilty. They told me everyone else is guilty when it happens. So wouldn't don't they have to play by those own rules? And they don't. They, they never think that. Because when it comes around to them, they understand the need for evidence. All of these people that are involved in this stuff, if they, uh, if every one of them was accused, they would think differently. You know, what's bad is false accusers, they, they rarely face consequences. And if they do, most of the time, it's a slap on the wrist. It's not true consequences. True consequences, um, I mean, we rarely see those. We always hear, well, if we if we hold the if we hold people to a standard, that might actually you could convict a, an innocent person. I mean, that what about is again, you know. I've also heard recently. Oh, well, I'm sick and tired of this believe all men nonsense. Fucker, if they haven't been, if they have not been charged with a crime, if you just have some random ass allegations out there with nothing else backing it up, what do you think? It, it, what it tells you is with people saying that, and I've, I've heard that a bunch of times lately. I'm like, you know, a return to baseline innocence is not believe all. And for you to say, believe all men, you're telling me men are being accused overwhelmingly. They are being tried in the media. That is a problem. And, and it's an admission of that. I've heard a lot of it. Megyn Kelly came out and said that. You know, she she at first said, you know, people don't need to go after the uh, the accused or the accusers. Okay, fair enough. And then started talking about believe all men. I was like, what is this fucking nonsense? Again, you're supposed to stand for some kind of principle. What principle would you want to apply to yourself? But I mean, it doesn't work like that. I fucking believe all men rhetoric. I mean, that's just another, it's just another ridiculous talking point. 
I hate that. I hate tr I hate trust, but verify. I hate that freaking statement because trust, the implication with it is there is truth in the matter. I, I don't give trust very freely. I certainly don't give it to just random or from 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 sketched in shadows that I can't even hear their own voices. I, I don't. And if you're saying to verify that, you're verifying the thing that you trust, that sounds like confirmation bias to me. I mean, that's the way I, I understand that people are saying that with a good intention, but there, it's not really. You, you see the mindset. It, it tells you about allegations. The allegations are poison because whether or not they are legit, they become real when they're spoken. And that reality, you can't ever erase it. And it doesn't matter what you prove in the aftermath. I have seen plenty of people prove that they did not. I've, I've, you've seen multiple YouTubers that stuff like that's happened to. And they came out and cleared their name, but the allegation always remains. It's a stain on them, you know, and it's also a stain. So there's this again, you see how fast this stuff moves, right? It moves within days. And people have this expectation since the Internet, people have that that TikTok mentality. They have that nat size mentality, that not a nat size attention span that. The accused should move at that speed. They're typically working. They may or may not be working with lawyers, but what they need to do is present. See, again, this is this is sad. The person that accused you doesn't have to present anything, but you, you better fucking find some real evidence and you better present it and it better be thorough and it better be airtight because you are guilty already. That shows you a problem. I mean, if they if they don't come out, we there there have been there have been three big YouTubers that this has happened to at recent, very recently, and they ended up presenting not only presenting stuff, but it's embarrassing because you have to go into private details of your life. Some of them are talking about their sex lives and this and that. And that's like, oh well, my God, man. <laughs> like, you know, one of them was talking about how they um how they had intimacy issues. And they went into very it, they said with embarrassing detail. They were embarrassed to talk about it, but they had to. They had they had basically been victimized. They weren't the victim in this situation, and people they worked to destroy their lives. Heather, thanks for the five. Listen and verify. I like MK, but I don't agree with that either. Both of the two genders lie and are vindictive. Verify everything. You don't trust. I mean, that's that's the kicker. You know, people turn this into a war on women, and that bothers me because uh, the majority of women out there are not going to do this. But there are, and there are a lot of freaking, there are a lot of victims, a lot of survivors, a lot of them, men and women. And again, they're done a disservice with this stuff. Subi Sue, thanks for the five again. Thanks for all you do. Well, I'm glad that you folks, uh, like I said, you've, you've made it where this kind of stuff can be, can reach enough people. You know, you're not just screaming at a wall. <laughs> you know, and... All of us together, that's the only way we change. Hey, you know, we don't have to agree on things either. We don't necessarily, we, we only have to agree on specific standards. We don't have to agree after that. I, 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 don't, I don't expect you to freaking ever have to walk lockstep with the opinions that I have. You know, when we're looking at some, maybe you see a piece of information differently and that's okay. 
It is absolutely okay because, uh, you know, and you voicing it in chats and stuff, that's okay too because ultimately at the end of the day, this is your channel just as much as it's mine. Anyway, I think it's a good place to stop. I'm sure tomorrow there'll be more Russell Brand stuff. I mean, we are in the height of it. We have a uh, we have a trial coming up. I don't know how that will play out, but on October the third, we have Marilyn Manson trial that's starting. That'll be the first trial with the Jane Doe accuser. Everyone knows who that is. That's crazy. Like some of the stuff that she accuses is absolutely just batshit crazy. She was saying like. Um, album liners and stuff prove that he's a, I'm going to say a playground enthusiast, you know, just all kinds of insanity. And that ends up, you know, we're going to get a, we're going to get a trial out of it. So that'll be, that'll be fascinating to see. You know, he did have a, what, what's crazy is that the media with, for Manson, he had a public spitting, you know, he spit on, he, I've been to, I remember when uh, Portrait of the American Family came out. I had uh, seen Nine Inch Nails. They were playing, um, they were doing their, um, they were doing their their giant downward spiral tour. It's huge, right? And Manson was opening up for them at the time. Manson came out and he had a, he had a, excuse, I'm just, it's explicit there, but he had a strap on on. And it was it was ridiculously long. It was like the length of his arm. And he was resting it on security guards' heads and stuff. It was ridiculous stuff. But, I mean, there would be spitting and other kinds of things. I was like, that's not, first of all, that's how those shows went. Second of all, um, that's not indicative of the allegations that are against him. I mean, it's gotten to the point where a, a rock star, a shock rocker, better not even be shocking. The very things that, again, they used to, like I said the other day, the very things that used to work as armor for people, ah, they make you vulnerable. I mean, you're not just seeing the pulling down of people. You're seeing the, the pulling down Really, the very fabric of again. I, I want, I want, I want rockers to be able to go out there, and I want to envy their lifestyle. Maybe they crash and burn, but you want to be like, damn, that's a crazy lifestyle. That's if they they live it, they live it. I don't want it the aftermath, unless they did something terrible. You know, if they're uh, regret isn't re regret is not. proof of non-consent and you see that a lot too oh man you know you think about all the rockers that would be on trial just because of the lifestyles they led some of them probably are scumbags but it, it wouldn't be because of proof but anyway i went into here it's a good place appreciate y'all